What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Barbells and Trails podcast. I am your host, Brett, and I'm your only host for today. Um, this is a solo, solo, solo episode. Um, Noah was busy and not able to make it, so I'm going ahead and recording it on my own. So um, we'll kind of see how this goes. Uh, I'm still going to kind of roll with it. Uh, and do the topic we were still originally planning on doing. So I hope it works for you guys, and I hope you guys enjoy. We'll kind of see how it goes by myself, um, considering I can't fully bounce back and forth off of anybody. But um, I know with this podcast itself, I do have a few um, listener questions um, and voice messages from Anchor that I can uh, I have from some people to answer some questions on our topic for today and so that'll be cool but um i just want to let everybody know i appreciate your guys' support so far um and if you haven't already subscribed to our uh youtube channel we have clips out every day let alone the full podcast every wednesday just like on all of our other platforms and don't forget to follow our instagram um, I'm trying to post more on it daily, hopefully, and uh, hopefully you guys enjoy and trying to put out some more content for you guys. And um, yeah, just appreciate the support. Um, I'm gonna have polls hopefully on every podcast episode from now on, and so you guys can go ahead and let me know what you're thinking on those polls. Um, or if you have Anchor, you can send us voice messages, and we might be able to respond to them on the podcast. So all the support is. Very grateful for all the support, I guess. But, um, all right. So, f- today's topic, I guess we'll kind of start getting into it. Um, we-, we were planning on doing this last week, but me and Noah just kind of got into conversation. As you can tell, it ended up being about an hour and 45 minutes long. I do hope you guys enjoyed. But this week, we are talking about, or I am talking about, 4-H. Um, honestly, I, what, what, <laughs> what is 4-H? Uh, not a lot of people know about it surprisingly considering it is the america's largest youth development organization um which uh not a lot of people necessarily know about but uh 4-h is yes like i said it's uh, america's largest youth development organization empowering nearly six million young people with skills um to lead for a lifetime so it's um, basically a youth development organization that, uh, what's the best way to describe it? Um, I don't know. We'll kind of break down the history and how it started, and uh, we'll kind of talk about what I did in it and uh, how how it changed me, I guess. But um, it's a community for children, I guess, uh, with clubs from, or clubs, basically from ages 9 to 18, so about 10 years eight to 18 depending on how old you are in school but it's been around for um over 100 years is it developed oh it's delivered by corporate uh, extension a community of 100 different public universities across the nation it provides experiences where young people learn by doing um it's been around for almost 100 years and 4-h has welcomed young people of all beliefs and backgrounds giving kids a voice to express who they are and how they make their lives and communities better. So it's uh it's really cool. 4-H is awesome. Um, we'll kind of get into it. I didn't even know the actual history of um 4-H and how it all got started. So um we'll kind of get into that uh because I didn't know. But um so I had to look this up and kind of read some stuff about it. But so 4-H uh, at least for us in Indiana. It's um, it's pretty fairly common. It's in all ninety two counties in the state, state fairs. It's evolved, I think, in all states in the U S. and multiple countries. But um, it actually all originated from the late eighteen hundreds. Um, researchers at the time discovered that adults in the farming community did not readily accept new agricultural developments on university campuses but found that young people were more open to new thinking and would, would experiment with new ideas and share their experiences with adults. And this way, Royal Youth Programs introduced new agricultural technology to communities. The idea was to practice hands-on learning 
and came from a desire to public um, connect public school uh, education to country life, building community clubs to help solve agricultural challenges. First step towards youth learning more about the industry and the community. So it all originated basically. Uh, it was kind of crazy um, for what I read about it and how it got started. Originally, it was just a bunch of people all, all kind of scattered across the U.S. that started something fairly similar that ended up coming together um, and making it and starting 4-H to what it is today. Um, but it was basically where public little groups kind of made clubs to help educate the youth on new um, agricultural learning because uh, in certain situations it wasn't something that was necessarily being taught besides possibly in colleges and it was a, a lot harder to try introducing new methods so they decided to start making clubs and get um, the rural youth in the ag industry that's raised in it in general to kind of work together and bring what they learn from their own experiences and be taught by others that have gotten college educations and whatever else um so it actually started in iowa in 1902 the first uh, major youth clubs were formed by a b gran Gra graham graham yeah <laughs> Started his first youth program in Clark County, Ohio in 1902, which is uh, supposedly the birthplace of 4-H in the United States. And the first club was the Tomato Club, or it could also be the Corn Glowing, glowing Corn Growing Club, um, and uh, possibly in uh, Douglas County, Minnesota as well. Um, started local agricultural after cl after school clubs and fairs that same year and they developed the clover pin with an H on each leaf in 1910 and by 1912 they were called 4-H clubs um, so 4-H our symbol that's been around for basically since the start was a, a clover um, I think originally it might have actually been three leaves it, it might have been four it was threes okay so in 1908 it was originally a three-leaf clover um as the emblem for the community but then was adopted in 1911 with the four leaf clover and the four leaf clover at the time standed for head heart hands and hustle which uh labor l later the last age was changed to mean health um so hands heart head and health are the four h's for four h um which is uh pretty interesting i didn't realize that hustle was one of them but it hey it, it gets the job done i guess when you're starting a new organization you you don't totally know um what the name and the meaning is going to be but it works um you know i might actually do once we get through this, I might do the 4-H. Um, I might do the 4-H pledge for you guys. So in 1913, Michigan had its first ever state corn growing competition. And in 1914, the corporate extension system is created. So... Uh, basically allowed it was actually a pa uh, an act passed in 1914 to create corporate extension system at the USDA and nationalized 4-H so it became a national organization and by 1924 4-H clubs were formed and the clover emblem was adopted uh, the corporate extension system is partnered with the National Institute of Health and Agriculture with United United States Department of Agriculture, more than 100 land grant universities, and more than 3,000 county offices across the nation. Corporate extension combines and expertise, uh, yeah, the resources from the federal, state, and local governments, and designed to meet the needs for research, knowledge, and educational programs. So, um, it was about 1914 when stuff started to kind of change to how I know it today where each county has their own 
headquarters and offices for 4-H, and then it has a level kind of like a state government almost, um, where you have a county level, state level, and even a national level once you get so high up in there. So um, that it was officially formed there, and uh, in the 1920s is when they started it, and it was patented, the 4-H clover was patented in 1924 which is uh, pretty cool. Um, I mean, it, it's it's changed so many times, and obviously it's ad adapted over the years. But um, the National 4-H Pledge and 4-H Motto was approved in 1927 after it was official. Um, and then in 1928, official county 4-H youth agents hired. So I'm guessing that was the first form of extension agents which are now at every county um which kind of is the person that works directly with uh for us in indiana at least i don't know how it works in other states exactly um i think every state probably has their own main university that kind of heads 4-h in the in the state but purdue is the one for indiana um so basically purdue hires extension agents to run and basically help organize um the 4-h events in each county so they kind of do their own thing and they work for 4-h itself so 4-h today so 4-h has definitely changed and adapted with um i guess overall society in america obviously it is not the same as the late 1800s and 1902 um technology and a bunch of stuff has changed for ag there is definitely a lot less people involved in agriculture in the united states i believe it's a statistic from 1920 almost 90 percent of the united states population worked in agriculture in some form and now that same statistic is almost only two percent which obviously balances out a little bit considering population growth and overall just technology advancements and the less people need to actually work out in the fields and do stuff like that. But 4-H today. Um, 4-H today serves youth in both rural, urban, and sub suburban communities in every state across the nation. 4-Hs are tackling the night... <laughs> I'm going to redo that. 4-Hers <laughs> are tackling the nation's top issues from global... I suck at talking. From global food security to climate change and sustainable energy to childhood obesity and food safety. 4-H out-of-school programming and in-school enrichment programs, clubs, and camps are offered a wide variety of STEM opportunities from agricultural and animal sciences to rocketry, robotics, environmental protection, computer sciences to improve the nation's ability to complete to compete in key significant fields to take on the leading challenges of the 21st century. So 4-H nowadays has changed dramatically, even from when my parents and uh, relatives were in 4-H, which we'll get to that a little more later. But, um, it's not um it's definitely a lot different i i uh i honestly encourage a lot of people to uh look into it if you're in your teens listening to this or um if you're a parent that has a kid consider 4-h it's uh definitely a great learning experience and nowadays it's not just agriculture there's so much you can do um agriculture is definitely the main thing i uh was involved in when it came to 4-H projects and this and that, but there's so much, like there's robotics courses, there's, I, there's hundreds of projects you can choose from, um, so it, it's definitely not just a country kids little club thing nowadays, it's definitely something else, but uh, like, like I mentioned earlier, I think we're going to do the 4-H pledge real quick, how about that, all right, no one knows this, so listen to this. <laughs> all right i pledge my head to clear thinking my heart to greater loyalty my hands to larger service and my health to better living for my club my community my country and my world boom 4-h pledge uh anybody that's been in 4-h probably just did it in their head along with me but um 
as you can tell, even from the overall pledge for 4-H, it, it's it's definitely um, it, it honestly is a really sick organization with everything they do, trying to just better um, teach and make um, young leaders and communities across the nation. Um, and it's it's had an impact on me for sure. But I mean, it's the youth. It's been around for so long. It's helped so many people. I think at this moment, there's almost six million youth enrolled in 4-H, and that doesn't account for all the adult volunteers and professionals and professors that work with it. And 4-H has over 60 million alumni, which technically I'm a part of that now. Um, so. If that tells you anything, I don't know if I'm old or what, but I, I am a 4-H alumni at, at this moment. Um, but it, it's awesome. 4-H is something, uh, I guess, like, let, let me kind of explain how you get started in 4-H. Um, it, it's definitely different than most uh, kids' um, opportunities uh, compared to, like, high school sports and everything. It's outside of school programs for the most part um you can st you can do it for 10 years ten, it's a 10 year max on um being in the, the club and the organization so you can start from the ages of i was nine but basically third grade until you graduate so you get 10 years involved in 4-h and you can do any projects you absolutely want to and it is amazing but once you once you graduate once you get that tenure you are done so that's about it but it is it's definitely changed a lot um yeah i've seen so many amazing projects uh 4-h projects with robotics and welding and th there's so much stuff um definitely back in the day it was mainly focused on how well can you grow your crops or what what can you do with that cow um <laughs> Uh, that was definitely the uh, original idea of it for the most part, which is amazing. But I think it's something that's very useful for um, today's youth. And it's kind of sad because I've seen uh, just some of the younger groups uh, of 4-H um, clubs and stuff now where I feel like the numbers, at least in my area, have dropped significantly, which is kind of sad um, because it, it was such a major part of my life. Um, but so, okay. So before I start getting into my, uh, past with 4-H and the history of it for me and any stories and projects or whatever I got involved with, we have a couple listener questions. So I will play the audio now and I will answer their questions for them. Hi, Brett. My question for you is how did you get started in 4-H? And what is your favorite memory? Mm, okay. So how did I get started in 4-H? I kind of mentioned it a little bit earlier. Um, so where I'm from, it's a it's small, small community for the most part. Um, but at the same time, close to highly populated areas. But the whole reason I got involved in 4-H um, was because of both my parents. On both sides of my family... Um, Basically, my, my whole immediate family was involved in 4-H. All my uncles, aunts, er, everyone um, w was involved in some way of, or another. Um, so I have uh, – I've done a whole lot. Uh, but, um, yeah, if it, if it, I mean, that's how I got into it. So I started immediately as soon as I could as a kid um, involved. Even before I could join 4-H, I was doing – uh, other stuff with livestock in particular and uh, doing stuff like that but I do actually have a question from someone else uh, that I think involves what what they just asked okay so my questions are so like your favorite memories um doing 4-H so favorite memories um that it's kind of b both people kind of ask that i don't know i have so many fond memories of 4-h um from from a kid to my last years um there was always something the best part was definitely 
the fair itself. So um, with how they do it most of the time, depending on what you do, you work on your projects. You have your clubs about year round, depending on what clubs you're in. And then um, in July or August, it just kind of depends on where you are and when your fair is. But then your fair is typically about a week long. So it's basically when you bring in any projects you were signed up for and they get judged and it's a long process, especially with livestock. Um, it, it's a whole week worth of stuff between showing and then just taking care of your animals while you're there. But it's a great time. It's a blast. Um, I'm just hanging out with friends, running around, tractor poles, fried food, you know, fair food, and all that kind of stuff, um, food trucks games activities all sorts of stuff so i would say my favorite parts were the fairs themselves but um i I don't know if i technically have a favorite memory um i honestly don't think any of them were projects necessarily um because i feel like all the fun i had with and through 4-h was from meeting people and getting involved with other people from clubs and events and stuff like that uh i guess one of my favorite memories is actually um, mine and Noah's origin story on how we met, which uh, if you listen to our first episode, you will know. That was actually at a 4-H event um, when we snuck out at Purdue. So uh, i definitely say that's probably up there, just hanging out with uh, people my age. But um, I actually have the same person ask multiple questions, so we're breaking it up. All right, next question is... I mean, I know this, but, like, how many animals... Do you- what kind of animals you showed how many they were and how how that experience was and like all projects that you did during 4-h all right so um animals so you asked about the animals and projects i was involved in and how many animals i showed um this person that messaged obviously i know who they are so they kind of did know uh, at least part of the answer to those questions there that question in particular um all 10 years i only showed one animal and that was pigs uh, i showed pigs all 10 years a variety of amount and breeds um most people don't know a whole lot about pigs but there are different breeds just like there are different dog breeds um so that's kind of how they break them up into different categories if you don't know and go from there uh i I'm trying to think. I showed. Uh, I had a few years where I showed six. Um, other years I only showed two or three. It just kind of depended on how things were with me and my sister on both of our projects. Um, so that's the main project I did. Another project I did. I don't even know if I made it all ten years. Was uh, baking. I did baking every year. I'm pretty sure. So baking was pretty self-explanatory. Um, most of the project that you want to do at home, if there's any activities as a kid, and you get booklets and you get to do different baking activities um, and learning opportunities. I could have been in a club for it. I, I was not involved in the club, um, but I did that. So every year it just kind of depended. They changed what you had to bake or cook as you progress through 4-H. So my last couple years was pies. Um, But like to begin with, it was like cookies, uh, bread, rolls, biscuits, stuff like that, Um, which which was a fairly simple project, kind of fun, last minute stress to bake it all before fair and make sure it was still good um, and would last and tasted good. But one year, I'm trying to think, how old I was I was actually able to win grand champion uh, at my county fair with my roles so my roles actually ended up getting picked to go to state fair so um, also at the end of like certain projects especially baking they do an auction they auction off your food to whoever wants to buy it most of the time it is families of some family member of some sort or companies or people you know that basically bet on your food and depending on how well you are or how long you've been in 4-H or basically sadly who you know um, the more money you get so basically they auction it off and then you get that money uh, clear free and clear is yours as a 4-H'er so that year I think for seven rolls 
I got $800, so a pretty good return on investment there. But I did end up going to State Fair with it. Um, I, I didn't do anything particular down there. So the State Fair is a whole different ball game, which I will probably get into some 4-H stories down there uh, here later. But, uh, okay, I got... <clears throat> um, oh, other projects. Wait, I'm not done. Uh, I did photography for three, four years. Um, I don't think I did any, any, anything crazy with that. Uh, I was a very average basic photographer. I feel like I had good ideas, but it was very basic on the ideas I had and what I could do. Um, people definitely, uh, were a lot more creative than I was. So I tried it out and did it for a couple of years, but there's people that were, uh, way better at that in particular. But I did that, um, and I was involved in two main clubs as well. I did Livestock Club, which just kind of, if you show any livestock, you're just kind of automatically enrolled in that one. So being, being uh, showing pigs and everything, a pig showman, um, Livestock Club I was involved in. So that was typically a monthly thing. Sometimes they'd have speakers in, you'd do activities with a bunch of other, other kids, um, in 4-H that are in the club and just kind of try to learn something new just depends but another big one that I was a part of was junior leaders so I feel like that one was probably one of the larger influences I had um which was pretty cool uh junior leaders is kind of like I mean you can kind of tell by the name it's a club you can enroll in from seventh grade until you graduate and so there you're kind of more involved with the community, doing stuff at the fair, uh, volunteering and uh, doing different activities to just kind of help your community. Um, some of my favorite experiences with that club in particular um, is that we we would be able to go every Christmas and uh, go shopping for some family. So we'd get a family, uh, I can't remember even how we got the names, but we basically get a list of um, stuff that this family needed for kids, parents, uh, whatever. And then we had a budget to go spend on Christmas gifts for those families. So we'd go to Walmart or wherever else, and we'd just go through and get, get anything we needed. So uh, I was always, <clears throat> I always had a lot of fun with that. I loved it. Um, I would try going all out, trying to pick the gifts for the children or whoever else I, I would make sure we got as much as possible with the amount of money we were able to spend because um, I wanted these kids to have an amazing Christmas as best as I could so it was definitely probably one of my favorites um, definitely fav one of my favorite experiences with junior leaders in general doing that every winter was amazing just trying to help out some local family that uh, wasn't able to buy gifts for their children that year but that that one was always so much fun uh, I got kicked out of Walmart shopping carts and this and that, and it was always a blast to go around with friends and just, like, get in a group and be like, okay, we got a four-year-old boy that needs a jacket. He loves Transformers and Star Wars. Uh, he needs gloves and a hat. The rest is up to you kind of thing. And then I'd be like, okay, like, here's his sizes. So we get the essentials, and then after we got the main essentials for what the kid needed, we basically at least in my groups or whenever I was in groups was how can we spoil this child and let him just have a great time so we do that we buy all these gifts and then we go back to our 4-H building um, and then we go and we'd all wrap all the gifts for the family eat pizza and hang out and then we would do that and they would be sent off for Christmas for those families um, I know that's one thing we did as a club uh, we also did I remember we did a group scavenger hunt through the town at one point. That was fun um, with riddles and whatever else to figure out and had to do that. I think my group won. I was very competitive. Um, and then we've also did uh, food drives and stuff, and I helped out with that for years, which was always a good time just uh, helping volunteer with that, carrying stuff, helping people get stuff to their cars, supplying people with meals um, around Christmas. So that was always a great time, but I think when it comes to projects, that's all I really did. Um, I was, uh, compared to a lot of people, I was very niche on the projects I was involved in. I loved 4-H, but 
not necessarily from the projects because some i mean there's a lot to choose from i never ventured out uh, i definitely probably could have looked through a list and found something i would be um interested in that wasn't livestock but i just never really tried i enjoyed the group activities the meetings the different experiences along that and with the fair itself more than the project so I couldn't necessarily be bothered to do a bunch and fill up my summer just doing 4-H projects I enjoyed going to different um, 4-H events and doing stuff which I'll talk about that in a minute but I do know someone in um, my county that did the exact opposite I know someone that did like 60 projects every year and that was basically all she did and uh, she went ridiculous but I got one more question. Like your most memorable memory that you can think of doing 4-H and how you, just how your experience was like throughout the entire thing. Okay, so the va last one was, uh, the last question was kind of vague, but um, my overall experience with 4-H. Uh, oh man, honestly, overall, I absolutely loved it. Um my sister probably thinks otherwise, but she was more wrapped up with the livestock stuff and dealing with that, which, um, that is one thing. If you start getting into livestock in certain projects, um, some projects are very laxy daisy on what you have to do, but livestock in particular is a lot of work. Um, especially nowadays, uh, compared to when my uncles and aunts and dad was in it, it's definitely a lot more, uh, political in the sense of like how much work it takes and the amount of work people do and um the amount of money sadly people spend um it's definitely a money game on who's going to do best sadly in a lot of places but we never did that too much but it was still a lot of work daily throughout the summer um but i overall i loved it uh, i definitely at one point i think by the end of it some of the livestock stuff i kind of got tired of but like i said um I, I had the most enjoyment out of doing the group activities and the fair itself and just hanging out with friends and the connections i made um which we'll kind of get into so i guess at this point i'm just going to kind of get into some of my 4-h stories and some of the stuff i did and uh stuff like that but i, I have uh, quite a few um, I guess speaking of events and stuff that I've done with 4-H, the main one I did for four years was Academy, which is where me and Noah, I guess, more officially met, and uh, that's when we snuck out. I did that all four years I possibly could, which was throughout high school, and every year was a little different. I did, so 4-H Academy is basically like a 4-H, it's kind of like a camp held at Purdue campus for three days. And you get to choose a certain topic. Um, I chose environmental sciences twice. I did renewable resources. Um, and I did, ooh, I cannot remember the last one, sadly. There's another one. Oh, show me the money is what it was called, is finance. So basically you have three days with that topic and then you're in a group with people that are also in that subject. And then you basically work with professors and whatever else. And they basically plan out your three days doing activities and learning different stuff or going here and there and seeing stuff live and be hands on. It's amazing. Um, my first year, I believe I did the renewable resources. So I'm trying to think some of the activities I did involved with that. We went to the wind farm up there at, out, uh, north of Lafayette. Um, we went to a place that purdue owns where they are at the time we're trying to create a replacement for crude oil um using grass natural wild grass uh which was interesting and then we also went up to fair oaks farms to see their methane uh, facility how they take their um cattle manure and turn it into methane gas to power their fleet of trucks so that was interesting and that smelled but so that that was my renewable resource experience i'm trying to think which other ones i did so i did show me the money so i'm trying to think we did so we got split up into families and then we did a geo guesser um they're not geo guesser uh, i can't remember what this was uh off the top of my head but basically where you could go find these little pendants hidden um 
Oh, there was an app for it. I cannot remember the name. So we had to do that, and our, we were split into families. So it was like me and three other uh, girls in my group, and we had to go get as many as we could, get these little caches to get money. And then as a family, like the next activity we did, we went to Meyer. We had to make a budget and <clears throat> try to spend the least amount of money as possible for the most amount of food for the week for our family so we had to go through and we, my my family won that activity because we planned out our meals and we did this and that and we got everything and we spent the least amount of money which was kind of crazy um considering it was a week worth of food supposedly <laughs> i honestly don't know if it would last in my house but hey um and then we also went to a house uh viewing almost to learn about uh house finances and stuff like that and then my last two years i did environmental sciences or natural resources Ooh, basically the same it's not the same thing i think it was natural resources my bad so we went to a nature facility that purdue owns which was like 700 acres of woods and so we went out there we caught and studied wildlife in the creek um we measured tree stuff on how they measure for logging and the amount of wood usable wood in the area to get estimates and we did a bunch of stuff like that um i went out there twice so a lot of hiking but it was a great time um so i guess that's 4-h academy that's probably my favorite uh event that i was involved in but I have a couple others um let's see uh oh well, there's another one i wish i did more so i missed out on junior leader conference that was something that was involved with people that were just junior leaders um and I think it was held down at Indiana University, or not Indiana University, sorry, the University of Indianapolis. Uh, the only year I signed up for it, I got sick the week of and could not make it, sadly. I was very sad about that. But um, anyways, uh, that, that one I've always heard was really fun. And then another one I did for a few years, not a whole lot, just because it lined up with 4-H Academy, which I preferred, was I was a 4-H camp counselor. So we'd go to Camp Shackmack, and I was a counselor there for uh, did I do two years, I think. Um, so it, it, it was interesting, I guess, to say the least, um, dealing with a cabin full of kids, probably 15 kids or more with three counselors all in high school, dealing with kids between ages, uh, I'd say, 8 and 12 probably. So it was a lot of fun. Um, got to do different activities. There's pool, swimming, all, all sorts of recreation. There was a bunch of stuff. Um, it, I got to admit that is one thing I kind of wish I did as a kid. I never actually went as a camper because I was uh, I was the shy, nervous kid that didn't want to do anything like that and was scared of meeting people. Um, I definitely grew out of that more as I got older, but um i did not do it when i was eligible to go uh because i was just i don't know i was nervous from being away from home for four days or three days or whatever uh with people i didn't necessarily know uh so i never i never signed up for it i was i was a shy kid that uh didn't get out of my shell until later in life but um so that is another group or yeah group event basically but I have to say one of my favorites that I got to experience my last year um, of 4-H and was the last year they had it available uh, for 4-H in Indiana was St ooh, Indiana State uh, Indiana State Conference or what was it? Indiana State State Fair Youth Conference. Yes, that's what it was. So it was kind of like junior leader conference. It turned out that a lot of the kids that were there for a junior leader conference that year also went to youth leadership conference. Um, that was my first time going and I had a great time. It was all people in high school, maybe even their last couple years. It was really cool. So basically we lived at the state fair for three or four days. So we were down there for three or four days, staying on the fairgrounds, helping out, setting up stuff for the state fair, and doing a bunch of other stuff. Um, at one point, we went to 
we helped with a food pantry down in Indy. I can't remember the name, but one of the larger ones in the in the state. Um, and we we helped work for that, so that was that was awesome. Um, we went to the Indiana State Building and did stuff there, which was really cool. I got to meet a Indiana senator. Uh, at one point, we saw the governor speak um, at the opening fair uh, speech, I guess. So I was standing there. I might have been on the news. I don't know. I do have a state with the governor um, of Indiana at that point, but it is on someone else's phone. But I did meet him and talk to him in person. Um, and we did a bunch of other activities. I think I had to, at one point that year, dress up uh, in a mascot costume to take pictures and entertain children. So I wasn't the original one in the costume. There was another kid in it. Um, but it was it was a warm day, and in that costume, it was probably over 100 degrees, and he was dying and soaked in sweat. And so I offered to cover for him because he had been in it for like a half hour. And I was like, hey, dude, like, obviously we need to keep this rolling. Like, this is our volunteering station. I was like, hey, you go change. I'll take over for you. Like, you've been in there long enough. Like, you're dying. And he was. He was drenched. And I found out later that I was going to be. So I'm running around in the, uh, I call it the Mr. Bean costume. It is not from the TV show Mr. Bean. But I was a soybean with a hat and big gloves like Mickey Mouse. And I was walking around uh, trying to take pictures um, with kids and get kids involved and some of the activities that they have set up at the state fair. Um, so my friends that were down there with me, Noah and Danny, uh, were actually kind of walking around trying to get people's attention to come take pictures with me and that I was just kind of the mascot that was there to take the pictures with. So it, it was a lot of fun, but by the time I was done, I was drenched in sweat and super dehydrated and dying on the inside, but it, it was a great time. And then I'm trying to think. One other activity we did do while we were down there that I can remember is we got split up into groups and then each group had to make a dinner or yeah, we had to make a meal for um, the Indiana 4-H state board or the state state fair board. Um, so we had to make different meals and then we had to choose the theme and decorations and food and then we had to pre pre prepare it set everything up ourselves and they came through for dinner and then chose who is the best and uh whatever else presentation wise food everything so at one point I, me and a, someone else got sent to Meyer. we had to go grocery shopping for our team and get everything we needed i can't even remember our theme at the time but we only had so much money to spend so it was a uh, it, it was an interesting time, but it was, it was so much fun, and I was happy to be involved in it, and uh, sadly, it was the last year they were doing it. I definitely wish that they had that um, still available for kids because that, 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 was, that was one that was a lot of fun um, and really enjoyed, but no, 4-H is, is an amazing program. I think more kids should be in it. Um, I think... I think in general the breakdown of um, the children and the amount of people that are involved is actually amazing. Uh, I mean, like I said earlier, there's like 6 million per participants, but it's split between urban, sub suburban, and rural communities. Um, I think there's almost 2 million almost in each subject, um, roughly. I think there is a little more rural, but there's still almost 2 million people uh, nationwide in the urban and suburban areas, which is amazing because there's so many opportunities with 4-H. Um, you can get scholarships. You can do a lot. There's a lot of people you can meet. And uh, like me, you might meet some of your best friends through it. And just like my family and everything else. State Fair itself is a whole different ball game. I will tell you guys that. Um, uh, if you think county fairs are cool, Go to the Indiana State Fair. It is not as big as some other states, um, but it is amazing. Uh, super stressful. So many people, so many animals, so many projects that it, it, it's just it's just cool to walk around and check everything out. Um, I haven't been down in two years. I need to personally go back down there, but um, it, 
4 H in general is an amazing organization, and I think more people should be involved in it and know about it. That's kind of why I'm talking about it. Although this probably isn't going to go out to a lot of people that um, are eligible for 4 H, or I feel like most people that might listen to this have either are too old for it and have been in it, or are already in it themselves. But it's something I've definitely learned a lot from. Um, I met a lot of amazing people in, and it's something I never would regret being a part of and I know my family would say the same with some of the stuff they've done and some of the people they've met along the way it is an amazing experience for someone uh kids and teenagers to be a part of because it definitely develops a work ethic and um just education and hands-on learning and you get to meet and network with so many different people but um, yeah, I, I do hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Uh, it's definitely going to be shorter than normal. I could still go, but I really don't know what else to talk about at the moment. Um, at least anything super, uh, in depth. Cause I, I mean, if I had some of Noah's stories or someone else's, we could probably go a little longer, but, um, honestly this is i feel like this is about as long as i can probably do personally uh i don't have a whole lot of stories um let me let me just think real quick Ooh, real quick i have some other county fair um experiences uh so one of the things that we that i was involved in through junior leaders was the collar me green run which some of you people have probably seen, but basically it's either a 5k or a mile run. Your donations go to, uh, for us, it was for a local food pantry. And then as you're running through, um, you get hit with water balloons, whatever else, and then thrown, uh, with green powder all over you, um, and stuff like that. So you get completely collared. Me and my sister helped out for a few years and, uh, I was stained green for a few days, but um, it was a lot of fun uh, helping out because, I mean, any leftover powder we had, we just threw it on each other. So we've done stuff like that. We've had water fights. We've done all sorts of stuff. But um, one of my favorite parts is just running around the fairgrounds to, like, like fair week is probably the most stressful and exhausting week, but it is the most fun. I mean, every morning we're waking up at, like, 6.37 or earlier to take care of the animals and feed and do everything along those lines or depending on if it's show day for us um get preparing the animals and getting everything set up uh to staying up till at least one o'clock every morning uh watching the tractor pulls running around with friends playing football um just going to the carnival like doing carnival rides and just being an idiot, playing cornhole, listening to music, um, cookouts. It, it's an overall amazing experience, and I really do miss it because that week affair is so much fun, and there's so much involved with it, but it, it and it's exhausting, but it's definitely one of the best parts. But I, ho- I hope you guys did learn something about 4-H today, and I hope that if you have kids, you consider putting them in it. Um, I feel like you get a lot more out of 4-H than you would in any school sport, personally. Um, just because there, there can be so much more to it than uh, just a specific uh, subject or project. But you can learn a whole lot from it. And I hope I've piqued some of your guys' interest in looking into it. But, um, yeah, I think I think that's about it. But All right, so since we're getting to the end of the podcast, I will ask you guys to... Um, I'm going to leave polls down below, like I told you, uh, on Spotify. So message us and uh, let us know what you think. Um, Give me topic ideas or if you guys have any questions for me personally, uh, I would be glad to answer them at the start of the podcast. Um, Or if you have uh, something you would like to ask and you have Anchor or would like to download Anchor at anchor.fm or the Anchor app, um, you can leave us voice messages on the podcast and we can actually use them in the podcast and I'll answer your questions personally, follow us and subscribe to us on YouTube, follow us on Instagram, uh, I'm going to try to put more content out. Um, so love to hear from you guys and DM, DM me if you guys have questions or whatever else, 
I, I love getting feedback. I love learning um, as we go along with this and want to do more. Um, and hopefully next week's runs a little smoother. And uh, I don't totally know what clips I'm going to get out of this episode, but we'll see what happens. But yeah, please, please comment and um, let us know what you guys think. I really do appreciate it. Like the videos send it to your friends. I, I do appreciate all the support and the listens, but, um, I think that's it for tonight, but I will, uh, I will talk to you guys in the next episode, or if you message me on Instagram, I'll talk to you then, but uh, I'll see you guys next week. I hope you guys enjoy. Peace out everybody.